you can see I've kept everything pretty sketchy at this point. I'm not drawing really clean, clear lines. And I didn't even start with a drawing in part because I wanted uh, this to have a very organic feel to it. And if I drew it out a little bit too much, it might hamper that feeling of being very organic. Now I'm going at a second pass with uh, the reds on the grapefruit. And what happens is I don't completely cover what I've initially done. It looks like it for the most part that I've completely gone over that initial pass. But I do leave little pieces, little bits, and that really helps just kind of this dynamic relationship between your initial paint strokes and what happens later on. And those little spots that end up through the whole process of the painting help give it a little bit more of a dynamic feel to it. So never completely fill in an area with paint. Always leave a little bit undone and a little bit of that underneath paint showing through. It just makes it much more interesting and dynamic to look at. Another thing I'd like to mention is that the way I'm stroking the paint, it's very lightly done. I'm not pushing hard into the canvas. I load the brush at the very tip at the end of the hairs of the brush, and then I just lay it on very lightly. Now I'm doing a second pass with the white of the pith here, and what I'm doing is adding less Scamsol, and it's a much thicker paint stroke that's happening and that thickness will help it pop out a little bit more and the value be even stronger. So what I'm playing is the transparent washes next to these really thicker passages of white to give that kind of dynamic between the transparency of the red grapefruit and that the white pith around it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is make a nice rich dark with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for the most part. Uh, push it more towards the burnt sienna side so that it's warmer and get a nice rich dark underneath. And what that will do is make everything more luminous by having that nice uh, transparent dark underneath these pieces of the fruit. Now, one of the things I did or that I planned to make this pop out like that is I really looked at the shadow shapes and how they could enhance and help pop out the subject. And so that's one of the things that when I set up subject like this and light it, I really want to look at those shapes and see how those will interact with the rest of the painting. Now the general shadow that I'm placing here is going to be slightly lighter and cooler than those initial darks that I put in because those represent more of the occlusion shadow.
So in this part, the drawing got a little sloppy and I'm scraping off what I had initially and just leaving just a tiny bit of paint left that'll come over with the background and shape. Uh, but that's what's really nice about these rubber scrapers is you can just uh, remove things. It's almost like an eraser in a way. Now I'm going to come in with the background, refine the shape. And this is where I find is the most critical part of drawing in when you're doing a painting is that you're cutting into the shape that you made with the background color. And that doesn't matter if it's a tree against the sky or in this case, a grapefruit. Defining your shapes is one of the most important parts of creating a, a beautiful work of art. So in the background here, I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna push it a little bit more green than I see it. Uh, although I'll keep the similar temperature and value that I see uh, initially at first, but then I will modify that a bit uh, later on if I need to emphasize a certain part of the grapefruit where I'll go darks, a little darker or a little lighter than I see in order to enhance certain parts of the grapefruit. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do as well is just keep it really thin back there in the background. And then so I'll play some uh, elements of thin to thick even on the background as well to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to leave some of the accidentals that are happening right here at the beginning with that nice thin wash towards the end, again, as a way to reveal the way this painting was constructed. I think it makes it a much more interesting painting than if I go to the same level of thick paint all across the entire piece. in and some of the basic shapes and design. Now it's about finishing the important key areas in order to make this painting work and leaving alone other areas that are more painterly and loose and not overworking those areas. So it's a balancing act between getting more finish and leaving things nice and loose. And one of the ways in which I try and work that balancing act is that the closer I am to the focal point, the tighter the detail I'm going to get, theoretically. And then the further away I get from the focal point or the main area that I want your eye to look, it'll, it can be looser. Now you can't have a really 
huge drop off between something that's super tight and then something that's super loose. As you move from the focal point to the outer edges of the painting, you want to get gradually looser and more expressive as you go outward, not abruptly. Otherwise, it will feel a little bit too jarring.